Divine Truth Assistance Group Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education in Love series. In the Pain, Pleasure and My Will presentation, Jesus talks about gaining a soul-based understanding of the true causes of pleasure and pain, sin, the results of sin, and encourages us to be sensitive to the true cost of using our will unlovingly. Recorded on 11th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Yeah, one of the uh, feelings I feel from this group is actually a feeling that you're going to um, you know that I'm patient and so what you're going to do is manipulate it. Which is an interesting set of emotions actually that drive a person's desire to take advantage of a situation. Yeah. So obviously you must do that in your personal lives because as I said to the, most of them before most of you arrived is that this, if you compare this group to the last group, the last group was not tardy at all. They, they all arrived at the time I asked them to arrive and, uh, and pretty much everybody was here on time. And uh, this group, there's not been a single time where you've actually done that actually. So, so that's interesting in itself. A uh, bit of an indication that you're willing to get away with things if you can. In other words, you're willing to get away with law. Which brings us to this, <laughs> this subject, actually. So this subject is pain, pleasure and my will. Sound like an interesting subject? Not really? No? <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay. Now, remember we've already in some of the Q&As discussed this, uh, this fact that unfortunately the majority of us aren't really accurate when it comes to measuring the true causes of pain or pleasure. We have two main problems actually when it comes to pain and pleasure. We don't understand the cause of pain or pleasure. So we're always in sort of doubt as to the cause of what caused our pain and also what actually assisted our pleasure. In many cases we're also <coughs> in doubt of. So the issue is that, one of the issues is that we have a, di have a difficulty determining the cause of pain and pleasure. And in fact, frequently uh, we also have a difficulty determining the effect unfortunately as well so if the effect is um, pain sometimes we from God's perspective it's great that you're going through a certain amount of pain but but you're thinking with pain is like pain should be avoided at all costs right and and when it comes to pleasure you're also not sure what, besides being not sure, not sure what caused the pleasure, you often can't even feel the pleasure that should have resulted from the thing that you chose. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? So we're not, unfortunately, we are not very emotionally sensitive to what are the true causes and the true sensitive to what are the true causes and the true effects of pain and pleasure. We've got, unfortunately we're fairly clueless. But let's look at uh, the world in general for a moment, shall we? Would you say that 100 million children dying every year is a problem? Yes. Yep. Well, you say that, but... If we look at how many, if I, I don't want you to do this, but if I looked at how many couples or singles that had an abortion, you might find that, that the percentage of women who've had an abortion in the audience is quite high, which is an indication that maybe we're not that concerned about 100 million children dying every year. 
You see, we, we say these things without giving it too much thought, really. So the reality is, um, do you think that like all that's going on, you look throughout the world at the moment, you've got all these issues at Syria, you've got sort of basically a, a war going on there, you've got war, pretty much it's very unusual to not hear of a war going on somewhere, isn't it? <clears throat> do we see that as a problem? Well, most of us would say we do, wouldn't we? But when it comes to seeing our fear as the cause of all war, we probably don't see that relationship. Right? So in other words, the effect, war, we don't really see its cause, which is our fear. People in fear causing war. Right. So the reality is we don't really see much at all when it comes to measuring things like pain and pleasure we, we don't we're not even sensitive to measuring pain are we like for most of us our our personal pain has to become chronic before we're aware that it was building up before then isn't it the case uh, it has to be really chronic before we generally do something about it it has to be a major problem in our lives and it causing us major distress before we choose to change it well that's a bit of an issue isn't it because uh, we can't change much if we if we just like blindly go on doing a whole heap of things without thinking that there's a solution to that problem the other, the other issue too here is that if you look at the centuries and millennia of human history, how many wars have, would we have had, do you think? There must be like thousands and thousands and thousands of them. <clears throat> Mustn't there? And yet each new century there's another war. It's like we can't, we can't even... We don't even think that it's caused by something, do we? It's like, oh, it's just human nature or it's just the human condition. There's nothing I can do about it. It's like we, we don't even think that there's a cause for most of these things. And so what we do is, uh, as a human race, we are so tolerant of pain. We are intensely tolerant of pain. Both our own pain wherever we feel it in our own body but also our own emotional pain we're even more tolerant of that we're so tolerant of emotional pain that it has to turn into physical pain before we even think there's a problem that's how tolerant we are of emotional pain right when i say tolerant i mean we put up with it we just put up with it going on and on and on and on and on we don't even want to be sensitive to it and when it comes to the physical pain and emotional pain of the world, we are intensely tolerant of that, aren't we? Like we? We'll just put up with all these different things going all over the world without taking any action, without changing our life, without changing our emotional condition, thinking that we, you know, somehow we're, we're removed from it all. But, but it's our world. So from a logical perspective, it has to be somehow being created by the people who are in it, <laughs> including ourselves. And it's funny when you talk to anybody, anybody will say, you ask a person, do you agree with this particular war? Oh, no, no, I don't agree with that. And you talk to another person, no, I don't agree with that. Now, now if everyone you talk to individually doesn't agree, and yet it's still happening, we must be lying to ourselves. <coughs> Mustn't we? Because if everybody you talk to individually actually didn't agree, then surely it wouldn't be happening. The fact that it is happening means that, that we're, we're probably all telling ourselves fibs with regard to why it's happening. And this gets down to this uh, problem that we have, <laughs> which is a very bad problem actually, is that, is that we don't, we're not sensitive, appropriately sensitive to pain or pleasure. We have no idea what causes our pleasure and we have no idea what causes our pain. None at all. So the question then becomes, well, what does cause pain and what does cause pleasure? What, 
really causes pain and what really is the cause of pleasure. Because uh, obviously our own happiness is very dependent upon answering that question. Does that make sense? So let's answer the question, shall we? Let's look at pain first, shall we? Since that seems to be our primary motivator <laughs> for many of the choices and decisions we make. Although even that might not be necessarily true given the fact the world's in so much pain and we don't, are not motivated that much to change that. So even that doesn't seem to very much motivate us, does it? Pain. But let's have a look at it as a... As a as a feeling, we're here, we're talking about both physical, emotional, all sorts of pain. We're talking about any kind of pain. What is it caused by? What's the thing it's caused by? Well, it's very simple, very simple. It's caused by sin. Let's say it another way, though. Making choices out of harmony with love. You can see why sin's an easier word, right? <laughs> it takes a lot longer to say those things. I just changed my... <clears throat> I could say it another way. Choosing to break God's laws. Those three things are the same thing. Now you can see straight away that we have problems because we think things are good when they're actually sin and we think things that are bad which God knows are not sin. So, you know, we already have a problem because we have no idea what sin is. So... And this is why many of us have no idea of the relationship between cause and effect of what's going on in our life because we think we're doing something good when actually it's out of harmony with love and therefore a sin and therefore it has painful consequences. But the, what, what we see is, I did something good, and now I'm getting a painful consequence. What's going on? The whole world's unpredictable. Everything's unpredictable. Right? That's how we analyse it. Without going, no, it's very, very predictable. Pain is always the result of sin from God's perspective. But So maybe what we need to do is just put in brackets there, shall we? From God's perspective. Not our own. Now you notice in many of your questions that you're asking me, I'm focusing you on... God's perspective versus your own. And there's a reason why I've been doing that, because I see you frequently doing this where you're looking at everything from your own perspective, thinking that it's true. But, but if, if it was true, you'd have no pain. If everything that you were saying was true from God's perspective, there'd be no pain. So, so the fact that we have pain means that it mustn't be true. And we can also see where it's not true if we're sensitive and in our relationship with God. So this is our issue with pain. There's pain. So, so let's take pain one step further and call it suffering, which, which I'll define as pain experienced over a long time. Right? Where it's just suffering then. Well, you can see that if pain is sin then suffering must be sin over a long time. And if pain is making choices out of harmony with love, then suffering must be making choices out of harmony with love over a long period of time. And if 
Pain is choosing to break God's laws. Suffering must be choosing to break God's laws over a long period of time. So the relationship between pain and suffering is just one is an instant thing and the other one is just done over a long period of time. Right. Humanity has tried sin now for a hundred and something thousand years. So we've had plenty of practice with it. And so we've been doing it for a long period of time. Is it no wonder that there's quite a lot of it as a result? We've been doing it for a long time. But when you think about that, you go, that's pretty illogical, isn't it? To do something generation after generation after generation after generation without changing any of our behaviour, any of our belief systems, doing the next generation doing the same thing again, the same thing again. We're doing it with more technology, but we're still basically doing the same thing. So back, back 2,000 years ago when we were alive, war was with arrows, bows, you know, spears and swords and, you know, and some cantilever-based devices, you know. So what's war now? Have a look at something on a screen and press a button. That's war now, isn't it? But it's still war. The, difference, well, the only difference is that now war kills more people than it used to kill in the past. So that tells me that humanity is not learning the lesson of what causes war. Doesn't it? M mustn't be. I, if we had learnt the lesson, then surely the war would stop. So we, we have this sort of funny belief that we can continue on with certain types of behaviour and hopefully things will stop, even though we're still continuing the same types of behaviour as we always have. And it's not the way it works. We can't. So, if that's pain, and if suffering is the extension of pain over a long period, so I'll just rub that out for a second. What can we do to uh, stop our pain? <laughs> Isn't it pretty obvious? Stop sinning. Stop sinning. Yeah. But we have to be able to measure it, don't we? We have to be able to measure the pain. We have to be willing to measure the pain. And we have to see the relationship, the relationship between cause and effect. We have to see that this particular decision caused this particular pain. That's what we need to see. Unfortunately, we don't. So what we do, so we need to see the relationship, I'll just put that down, between cause and effect. The cause will always lead to an effect of some kind. So if the effect is pain, what I'm saying is the cause is sin. That's what I'm saying. It's not some arbitrary thing that happened. It's not some, uh, you know, human nature kind of thing. It's not, it's not that, you know, there was just a mistake made. It's not that, um, you know, that so there's just, the, you know, survival of the fittest or any other unplanned event that's occurred that's caused this particular pain. It's something that's caused it, that's fixed, finite, and able to be predicted over and over and over again, is what I'm suggesting. Now, in the first group, I talked to them, and I also mentioned to you a bit in the very first discussion we had this week, about the relationship between cause and effect. Um, we often see that physically. So, in other words, you know that, for instance, if you go up onto a building, a couple of stories high, jump off of it, there's a high likelihood you're going to break your legs, right? Or break something, particularly if you land wrong. Because gravity will pull you down at 9.8 metres per second squared. And the higher it is, like, then the faster you hit the ground. Because it's an accelerating force, a force that accelerates over time. And therefore, therefore, if you're two seconds up, you'll be travelling at 9.8 metres per second squared. 
means that you'll be traveling at quite a large speed by the time you hit the ground because you're accelerating through that entire period and it's only the wind velocity or the, or the wind drag friction which will prevent us from actually continuing to accelerate ad infinitum towards the ground so eventually we hit what's called a terminal velocity and then that's how fast we hit the ground right so there's another force the force of the air pressure around us and that, what effect that has on us that prevents us from accelerating and accelerating and accelerating before we hit the ground. But the force, the gravitational force or pull, is consistent here on this planet. You can measure it, we base our world around it, base our life around it. We even shoot at people off to other places, you know, like we've sent people to the moon, based on the fact that they could come back. <laughs> otherwise it'd be a bit of a problem and and we're we're able to predict even where the earth is in its rotational area as to how they can come back and where they're going to land even everything is all predictable because laws govern the predictability in other words as people we are used to the physical predictability of everything around us based on law and what i'm saying to you is, is if the effect is pain, then and if, all, and if all of God's laws work the same way, then that means that every single pain we have in every single part of our body, every single emotional pain we have, whatever, we, whatever it is we feel, are all predictable based upon our choice to take a certain action. And if you and I take exactly the same action, exactly the same moment, exactly the same time, in exactly the same circumstances, we are going to have the predictability of having exactly the same thing happen to us, emotionally and physically. That's what I'm suggesting. Now, I know that to be the case, but most of you do not believe that to be the case. Because if you did, you would take, start taking different actions. Right? So you don't believe that. And what I'm suggesting is that sin generally, anything out of harmony of love, causes pain generally. And if it's a specific sin of a certain type, it will cause a specific pain. So what I'm also suggesting is if a person, ha like a woman has cancer in her left breast and another woman has cancer in her left breast, it's exactly the same sin that creates the cancer in both of those women. That's what I'm suggesting. Exactly the same sin. And you can see that if I could find what that sin was in the first woman, then I could cure the second one, couldn't I? Right? That's what I'm suggesting. So it's very, very important that I begin to analyse the effect and then try to find its cause. And, and I'm saying generally the cause is sin, We've just got to see the flavour of the sin, the type of sin that's being committed as to its effect. That's all we've got to do. Now, another thing that we need to talk about with pain. Notice I haven't said it, that it matters where it comes from, the sin. So it doesn't matter if you cause the sin which is now existing inside of you or somebody else did it does, it's immaterial where it came from what matters is it's there and it's being acted upon right, that's what matters so it doesn't matter whether mummy did this or daddy did that or you know my brother did this and my grandmother removed on my mother's side by three generations did that well, all that matters is me finding out what the sin is and removing it that's all that matters it doesn't even matter really now that it's there it's there what can we do about it all we can do now is remove it so there's two things we need to do we firstly need to as we pointed out in the previous session we need to remove old sin and stop new sin if we are going to be free of pain that's all we need to do
Pretty basic, eh? Monique, you'd like to ask? Got this. When you're really confused, you get this little <laughs> in your forehead. You. And it's not when you're really confused, it's when you're really unhappy with the explanation. Fire away. I just wondered, Tell me what you're unhappy about. <laughs> um, I just wondered, the sin that I create feels the same. Does, it, does, it, does all fi sin feel the same? So the sin that I create feels, if I'm sensitive, I can feel pain. The sin, if someone projects at me, I can feel pain, is that what you're saying? Or my old sin feels pain. Like well, feel what pain. is old sin? Um, um, old sin is things that I've done in the past mm -hmm. that I recollect. That you've yet to be repentant for now. That I've yet to be repentant for now. Yes. And are we talking about emotional pain? Like Of course. So when I when I think about that Not just emotional though, it's physical too. Yep. Physical pain is caused by an additional sin and that is the desire to suppress the emotional pain. The desire to suppress emotional pain causes physical pain. Yep. Go on. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, um, the pain that I feel if I think about or recollect an event, mm -hmm. um, it feels painful inside. Yeah, but see, again, you, you've got to be careful here. This is God's definition. So you feel painful inside about things that are actually good for you from God's perspective, and you feel pleasure inside about things that are bad for you from God's perspective. We're talking about God's perspective here. <laughs> Yes, that's what that was. That's what I'm trying to ask. Mm -hmm. um, that I know you. You know, <laughs> you know. Um, yep. So, so what's the confusion? What What's the feeling you have? Well, see, um, this is driven by a feeling. So, what's the feeling you have, Mike? Um, I feel sad. Why? Um, it makes you feel confused. What? Why? <coughs> I don't. I don't understand how. I guess uh, all the pain comes from the same. Like I feel pain if if you don't mean an addiction in me. I feel pain. Mm -hmm. I feel pain if I. But see, sing. that's not real pain. No, exactly. Well, but. But because See, I'm I talking about God's definition of pain yeah. and God's definition of pleasure and God's definition of sin and God's definition of loving behaviour. Right? Yeah. The trouble with the world's definition, and this gets back to our very first day, doesn't it? You yes. remember? Yes. Remember I raised the issue about the work, getting the world's definition of love versus God's. Yes. The, prob the problem is that we don't have God's definition of love. We have the world's definition. Correct. The world's definition is sin is good. In fact... The world's definition is sin is love in most cases. In other words, for the majority of us, when we get an addiction met, we think we're being loved. And God's going, no, no, it's a sin that's going to cause you damage and it does cause you pain. This is why we're all confused about pain, you see. And then remember the other yesterday I was talking to or the day before yesterday I was talking to you about the need to not be governed by pain anymore in terms of our decision making process. Because unfortunately your definition of pain is not God's definition of pain. God's okay with you having a cry. In fact, God actually wants you to have some cries. <laughs> There are some cries that God wants you to have. God wants you to be repentant for past sin and therefore God to be repentant, part of that process is going to be crying about your past sin, isn't it? So God actually wants you to have a cry. God's overjoyed when you have a cry. Because you, particularly if you're in a state of repentance while you're doing it, he's overjoyed. So this is all about God's definition again, not, not yours. 
Now, the your problem that you have is how do I tell what's God's definition and how do I tell what's mine, isn't it? Yes, because that's exactly right, because um, I feel pain if I sin, but I feel pain when an addiction doesn't get met, which is in God's perspective, a sin. Yes, this is what so happens. Remember I said this thing about jumping from each side? Remember in that discussion about change? I, said, I talked about, on one hand, we're here sinning and getting pain. And so what do we do if we jump off of that and go over to here and then we're exactly. not sinning and we're still getting some pain, what we define as pain, then what do we end up doing? Nothing. This is why most of you are doing nothing. Right? It's because you're only driven by pain. If I cry about the pain... Is that real then, or am I just crying about pain? That's you're just real? crying about the effect. That's not the cause. So that's not going to help you either in the long run. It might list, li open you up a little bit to be emotionally sensitive, but it's not going to help you in the long run, is it? To help you in the long run, you've got to release the cause of the pain, which is all about attitudes or belief systems or feelings, emotions within you that are out of harmony with love from God's perspective. We're say what we're saying is all your pain is caused by everything being out of harmony with love from God's perspective, not from yours. Right? So it's the imperative for me to find out what God's perspective is, is it not? Like this, this becomes my major challenge. What is God's perspective? Right. So it's not even the issue whether I have pain or not pain, but the f what you've been saying the whole time along, God's perspective on love. Yes. On sin or whatever, whatever I'm doing wrong. Correct. That's what matters. That's what's going to be the answer to the age-old problem of to whether you're in pain or not, is to find out what God's perspective of sin is and not do it. Find out what God's perspective of love is and do it. Now God's willing to tell you what God's perspective of love is. So that's kind. But what are we doing? We're rejecting everything God tells us because how does God communicate with us? Emotionally. And, and when God's saying, no, that's really wrong, we're, what we're going to feel it as is a pretty... Big emotional that, uh, pain, because God's saying it's wrong, and we're going to feel that as an emotional pain. God's saying it's wrong. We don't want to feel emotional pain. This is one of our primary problems. Right? We're only driven by the avoidance of pain. And like I said to you the other day, you've got to stop being driven by the avoidance of pain and allow yourself to feel pain if you're ever going to progress. Right? And still, for the majority of you, it's like, no, 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 please, I just want to prevent pain. I just want to prevent pain. Preventing pain is the problem. Because you're choosing to prevent pain, you're choosing to prevent any healing that will happen in your, inside of your soul. And because you're choosing to prevent pain, it's your definition of pain that you're preventing, not God's. And so, you know, you could be causing more pain. You've got to stop being driven by the pain and start being driven by what is love and what isn't. Start being driven by what is truthful and what isn't. That's all. That's the only consideration. Right? That's my only consideration. It doesn't matter to me whether I will experience personal pain. Does that make sense? doesn't matter. I know that some pain is healing and some pain is the result of my sin. Either way, I need to feel it if I'm ever going to be sensitive about what's caused it. I know it's essential that I learn to feel pain. Pain is my feedback mechanism. It tells me what's going on. It's great for me. If I spend all my life preventing it, I won't be sensitive to what's going on and therefore I won't be able to know how to fix the problem. So, Monique, that's your main problem, is that all you want to do is prevent pain. Can I, some, sometimes I feel pain when I, when I feel about something I've done, like a, something, a sin. And, and I don't know, I've, know I've observed you do some pretty nasty things to other people and it even be pointed out to you 
Yeah. And you've not chosen to stop the action. So that me tells me that you must be receiving a pleasure from it of some kind, that something that you think is pleasurable. I feel like I've I've seen some of the things I've done and I've felt pain about causing causing that to people and no. I don't think so, because when you truly feel that, you get into a state of repentance, and when you get into a state of repentance, you never do it again. But what I see you doing is again and again and again. So I, I can't see how that can be true. A person who's truly repentant for past behaviour and who truly knows what the cause of their pain is doesn't engage action again and again. They, won't, they don't. They know what the cause of the pain is, and they stop doing what causes the pain whether it be to themselves or others. Right? But the problem is your measure of pain is only about yourself. That's all you're interested in. And to be honest, I feel the majority of the audience in the same place. All, you pr all you're interested in doing is preventing your own pain. You don't care about others. You don't care about their pain. Only interested in preventing your own. Many of your sin-based decisions were all about trying to prevent what you thought was your own pain, which basically needs to be that's that's the problem we need to be prepared to feel pain i said that a few days ago to you we need to be willing to feel pain that's the only way we're going to get forward from this place be willing to feel pain be sensitive to pain feel it allow ourselves to actually feel not only what we've done to ourselves but also others and actually start seeing pain from god's perspective there are some pains from god's perspective that are good like the pain of repentance is a good pain for us to experience for example so so if i'm in my heart in my soul rejecting pain there's no way that i'm going to sincerely want to feel the real thing Shit. Yeah. So no repentance like because no. you'll fool yourself delusion. to the kingdom come as the saying goes yeah you you will like if if pain is your only goal preventing pain is your only goal you're never going to become at one with God. You're never going to become a loving person. Never. And you won't feel any real emotion? No, you can't. Because you're, because you're in a place where you're just getting addiction meant to avoid pain. You've got to be prepared to feel pain if you want to progress. Like, honestly, I've had to feel an immense... You know, I've done this for 20 years now, right? And, like, it's pretty rare for me to not cry two hours a day. So I've had to feel an immense amount of pain from what your perspective is. It's the only way I've progressed. So you had to work through blocks to you, to feeling pain, obviously. Yeah, of course I did. At the beginning, I was like 33 years of age and numb. Yeah. I had all these illnesses and diseases and <laughs> everything in my body. You know, I was feeling really, really bad. You know. I was in quite a bad state emotionally, had all this emotional pain and physical pain, and I had to allow myself to become open to feeling it. And once I started being open to feeling it, then I could make some progress. And, and maybe we'll, we'll learn what you did in... I'll learn what you did today. I've already told you what I've done this week. You did. Yeah. In the last one. But... But you can, see, you can see this discussion of pain causes you to feel quite distressed. You, you, and this is an indication of how addicted you are to avoiding it. Does that make sense? Because it makes you feel really distressed. Like you screw your whole face up. You know, it's like you're distressed about having to feel pain. So this, this is what needs to change. This, and, and you can develop an aspiration, just like we talked about in the last, in the last chat. We talked about how to develop an aspiration, didn't we, in the Q&A. So you can develop an aspiration to feel pain, knowing that it's going to heal you, knowing that it's going to remove from you a whole thing, heap of things that will cause actions to be loving now instead of unloving. Once you've released the painful emotions, the things that cause you to be led to sin, obviously you won't as easily sin anymore. 
Anyway, let's uh, go across to oh, Barbara and then across to Natalie. As you were talking, I was feeling that if I remain humble to all my emotions mm -hmm. and do exactly what you've been saying, I can, my pain will go away, but also the pain that I've incurred on children, grandchildren, and I'll be able to measure that over time. Yes, because so, the law of compensation is always at work. Mm -hmm. So the law of compensation right now in your life is telling you the things that, have, that are wrong. Right now, it's not going to get worse unless you sin more. Right? It can only get worse by sinning more. Right? Or not releasing your current sin. That's the only way it gets worse. And we talked about in the previous presentation that the best thing to do is to sin no more and remove your current sin. And what I'm saying to you, the, the way to remove your current sin is to feel the emotional pain associated with the current sin mm -hmm. and to enter a state of repentance. Now, now, we've constructed a program where we talk about, in the future, we talk about yourself because we've got to see how all of these things interplay. So we, we need to spend a whole week on you, yourself, what you've made up of, you know, the hurt and the facade and the real self. But after that, we're looking at understanding God's laws better. What, what, what laws are going to impact upon you removing pain is really what we need to discuss. So we'll be discussing those particular laws in that group. And then after that, we're looking at understanding sin. So we need to understand the motivations to sin. And the primary motivation to sin is your avoidance of what you believe to be pain. That's your primary motivation for sin. And suppression of the pain? Well, when you suppress the pain, you don't even think you've had any. You know, you're trying to avoid the feeling of pain. Okay. Suppressing pain is the same thing, trying to avoid the feeling of pain. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's all, that's what causes us to sin. That's what causes us to take actions that are out of harmony with love. Because we're desperately trying to prevent pain. So for some of you, pain just means having to feel a little bit of fear. And you'll do anything to not feel fear, right? I had a discussion a few years ago with a group, with an audience in uh, the US, uh, up in Philly it was actually. Remember, yes. I think you were even there. Yes. Um, remember in the uh, restaurant? Yes, vividly. Yeah. How angry everyone got <laughs> with me. Yes. <laughs> I was just like, I was surrounded by about 50 people just <laughs> hammering me. <laughs> Because, because they didn't want to accept this one fact that, that actually their attitude with regard to their fear was causing the wars that America was engaging in. And they were all trying to tell me that wasn't the case. I couldn't agree with them. right? Because they didn't even want to see that fear, they, they were justifying to me, so, to me, fear. Fear is a good motivator for going to war. If you want to prevent other people from attacking you, go and attack them first. That's the right thing to do. Right? But it's all, or even attack them last. It doesn't really matter which order you do it in. It's still not the right thing to do. You know what I mean? But nobody wants to accept these truths. That's why we have continual pain. Yeah. Mm. And that's why we have an unloving man wanting to be president now in the US. Yeah, he's just connecting with people's pain. He knows how to manipulate people's pain. He's made, he's made you know, he's had decades of time to learn how to manipulate people's pain in order to have power over them, in order to get control of them, in order to get money for his own wealth. He's had decades of it, right? And, and the American people have become these puppets to pain. That, that's all they're interested in, just avoiding pain. As most of us are in the Western world, that's all we're interested in doing. And of course, if he does get into power, it's exactly what... Is exactly what the American people want. They want somebody to come along and push all their buttons and say all the right things and meaning nothing. Nothing. That's what they want. Thank you. So you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he does. If he does get into power, you know. And and this is the thing: is that it's like it's driven by our avoidance of pain. We want to avoid pain, you know. Whether that you know 
whether that just be economic hardship or whether it be some physical hardship or whether it be the fact that I haven't got a job and I want somebody else to make one for me and all, all, all sorts of th pains that we have and all we try to do is avoid them and we, want, we blame others, we want others to fix it for us and so you know, most people in the Western world are really heavy on governments because they want the government to fix their personal problems. That's because each of us individually don't want to feel our personal problems, don't want to feel our pain, and we want someone else to blame and someone else to be responsible and someone else to fix it for us. It's all unloving, and we're not willing to see our own unloving behaviour. Yeah, It's a big problem in the Western world, isn't it? I was just going to comment. My arm swelled up yep. because I was resistant to feeling anger yep. that I was feeling when I was visiting my sister for five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously still resistant. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Natalie, you were going to ask? Um, I was just wondering... <coughs> Excuse me. Is repentance allowing God's perspective to enter you emotionally? Because I don't feel I've ever been repentant. I know that I'm remorseful when I see an action that I take that may be unloving sometimes, and I use the word sorry. Yeah, I feel you feel guilt, which is different okay. than repentance. So when you get to a place of repentance, you're actually feeling the harm that you've done. You're allowing it? God's feelings about that matter to enter you. Yeah, okay. Thank you for mm. clarifying that. Powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Mm. That's what, so I'll say that again. You're allowing God's feelings about that matter to enter you. So that, that's, that's what repentance really is. So, so it has a, very powerful, has a very powerful effect on your whole process. But we're talking a lot about repentance in how to engage God's laws and, how to in, and also the issues of sin, how to remove sin. That's why we're having those discussions with you, to show you what, how to measure you, whether you're even sorry for what's happened or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's good. At this stage, we want to focus your attention on this because, uh, you know, we see it's a, it's a big problem. What, what, as a big problem, what we see is most people have no concept of the damage that they're doing to themselves and to society generally and to the environment we're living in by just making a choice that's out of harmony with God's laws. No, no concept. We want to make choices out of har harmony with God's laws with impunity. That's what we want. We, we want to not have some effect, but there will always be an effect because the cause, sin, always causes an effect, which is pain. It always does. There's no other thing that causes pain from God's perspective. Even the pain that's in you right now has either been caused by your own sin or the sin of others. Uh, it could have been caused by your mum and dad's sin or it could have been caused by a school teacher's sin or it could have been caused by your brother or sister's sin or it could have been caused by your own choice to sin. But the sin that's in us right now is either because of the choice of ourselves or the choice of others to sin. And the problem is that it's emotional now, it drives our behaviour, drives our actions. All right, well, let's, uh, that's that's pain so what do you think pleasure might be it's pretty easy isn't it no sin <laughs> Not making choices out of harmony of love and not choosing to break God's laws. <laughs> and happiness, which I would classify as long term pleasure, obviously is doing those things over a long period of time. All right. So what, what, one thing that God's shared with me and, and is totally capable of sharing the same thing with you, of course, <laughs> and that is 
that actually all of my pain is a direct result of my breaking God's laws or somebody else breaking God's laws before I could make the choice to do so. That affected me. And all of my pain is not, not just that, but it's also my unwillingness to release that. My unwillingness to address that. That's what causes my pain. And then, I, then, then also you come to see that actually you could reverse all that and only have pleasure. Uh, this is one of the advantages or rewards of using your will to love. Is that in the end you can get to the stage where once you're at one with God in particular, there's only pleasure. It doesn't matter what anybody does to you in fact, you don't even feel pain anymore. So that's very interesting, isn't it? That you've actually got control, not by the way you have control, but you actually do have control over how much pain you're going to experience in your life and how much pleasure you're going to experience in your life through the exercise of your will to love. That's how you get control of it. How's everyone going? <laughs> Everyone's struggling with this. <laughs> Glenda. <laughs> is pleasure and joy the same thing or is joy another step? I feel joy is like happiness, like long-term pleasure. Yeah, over a long period of time. So pleasure is really only a short-term thing, but it can go on and on and create. And create joy too, yeah. Yeah, true pleasure, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions? Alex? <coughs> um, yesterday when you spoke to David and Jada about their mum issues. Yep. Triggered a lot of my, I've got the same stuff. Um, and this pain that started to come up, I started feeling fear about it. Then this pain came up that <laughs> was just unbelievable. Like my entire chest and half of my entire back. And I just went, no, no friggin' way. Yeah. You know, like... And just shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what do I... Is it just the will that I need to develop to feel that? Or well, yeah, you, you've got to get... See, uh, what I'm saying to Monique is the same as what I'd say to you, and that is yeah. you are driven by this desire to avoid pain, yeah. whether it be physical pain or emotional. Yeah. And, and what we've got to do at some point is get to the stage where we aspire to actually feel pain no matter what. Mm. Right? Now, if you had aspired to feel the emotional pain, then you wouldn't have had the physical one. Okay. I get confused with that because I feel like if I feel it, then my chest is going to explode or <laughs> something crazy is going to Yeah, I know. We're afraid of dying, some of us, yeah. feeling our pain. Mm. But the reality is if you, f if you don't feel your pain, you will die. Yeah. But it's true because it's, yeah, it's when, you, when you stop crying, that's when the pain comes up. When you haven't that's right, fully when you're suppressing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> no, <Nah>. no. <laughs> nah. It is. It's telling us I'm suppressing yeah, it now. True. It is. Yeah, true. Like, yeah, like I, honestly, I've had like uh, fairly constant pain in my back the whole time I've been talking to you since day one. So I know I'm suppressing worth issues. And I know I'm doing that. And it's just a reminder. I don't, I'm not there going, oh, I've got to you know, go to the doctor and get this done and get that done. And you know, I've got to try and keep this pain off and I've got to go and get this happen and that happen so I can re release. I know what's causing it. I know it's my resistance to feeling my worth issues. I know that. So I just keep telling myself, there it is again. My resistance to feeling my worth issues. I've not yet got my aspiration sorted out to feel that. Have I? Otherwise, I'd be feeling it, right? Now, in my case, it's different to yours. It's like you don't have to accept your Jesus, someone from <laughs> 2,000 years ago or anything, right? So obviously, my worth issues are going to have a fair bit more intensity to them than yours. But at the end of the day, every time you suppress some emotion inside of yourself, you will cause your body physical pain or automatically. Yep. And it's a wonderful feedback mechanism. In fact, I sort of see almost pain and pleasure both as being this wonderful gift God's given us to, to give us feedback instantly about what's going on. 
in our life. You know, now how many times do you get a sort of a headache behind your eyes? Uh, how many of you find that you get a headache behind your eyes? So almost half the group. Okay. That's the direct result of you suppressing tears. So that, that tells me that there's a resistance to crying. So if you could just find out what that resistance was and, le and release it, you will never get one of those headaches again. Ever. Just doing that one thing. And, and it's the same for every one of you. <laughs> That's the beauty of all of God's laws. It all, the cause is always the same that produces the same effect. Does that make sense? So in that case, it's always the suppression of sadness that's causing you to have that headache. Always. So you know, that's the, that's, that's the case for all of you that have that particular <laughs> issue. All you've got to do is find out the reason why you're suppressing sadness. Work on that. Develop an aspiration to find out the reason. Develop an aspiration to feel your sadness. And you'll be able to feel your sadness and then no more headaches. Teresa? <coughs> if we bring this one down to Tara on this side. Um, you, can, can, you can suppress pain though, can't you? I feel that that's... That I of course that. you can suppress pain. You so, can so you don't feel it? Yeah, my, a lot of people do that. Yeah. That's when you get... Right, terminal pain when you do that. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, things like cancers and stuff like that, all caused by the suppression of the original pains, firstly the emotional and then the underlying physical that is triggered. And then after that, you, you try to suppress that as well. You try to detune de from it, zone out from it, do things to get away from it and so forth. And then you're entering the terminal phase now. Tara? So even um, I, f I find picking and choosing what I want to... Yeah, like that's common. For example, when I gave birth to my last child, a boy, and I'd already had four son, uh, three sons, mm -hmm. I had intense disappointment. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I was running away from that. I did not want to feel that. That is the worst thing a parent could feel, disappointed mm -hmm. in a child's gender. Mm -hmm. Within 24 hours, I got a fever. Mm -hmm. And because I was absolutely determined not to go to hospital, mm -hmm. I had a home birth. Mm -hmm. So I was not going to hospital. I was not going to have antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Is that still avoidance of pain then? It, I, I felt through the emotion. It was to do with my mum's stuff, with men. And my fever literally dropped from 39.9 down to 36.9 in a matter of one or two hours. Mm -hmm. So you allowed yourself but to feel some emotion. Yeah. So I came out of it, no worries, and I had no need to go to hospital and felt differently towards Teo. Mm -hmm. I felt mm -hmm. love for him. Mm -hmm. But that was still um, motivated really by wanting to avoid pain. pain from going to the hospital. Yeah. So not still not a loving motivation. So, but then how does um, some positive outcome end up happening? Well, because pain is your feedback mechanism. <laughs> like God's, God's providing pain for you to tell you that something's wrong so that you can fix it. Mm. Right? But, I, but something positive came of that is what I mean. Of course, you can be, like I said, you can be motivated by pain and release things, certainly. Right. But you're not going to ever become at one with God doing that is what I've said to you. So if I hadn't <laughs> felt that disappointment, yeah, I would have um, um, still felt that way towards him. If I wasn't aware of that, I mean, and yeah. he would still be feeling. It's very not the unworthy. only issue, no, though, because you wanted no. a you wanted a girl. Yes. And that's not about your father mother's issues with men. No, there's more. Yeah. yeah. So there's more to feel there, but but the the reality is that you felt some of the pain because you were motivated by the pain to feel to allow yourself to feel right. Mm. That's what motivated you. Like I said, that will certainly help you, but it's not going to help you become at one with God. No. Okay. Because uh, to become at one with God, you've got to be motivated by love and truth. So it would be more of a desire to love this little human um, 
no matter what. Now, now you're trying to guess what the emotion would be. <laughs> oh, oh, no, yeah. You follow? You're now trying to guess what you should do next. Right? What I'm suggesting yeah. is if you were motivated by love and truth, right, yeah. then you would have probably felt these emotions way before the time you had a child. Yeah. And in fact, you might have had a girl. <laughs> yeah. Right? If you had actually been motivated by love and truth to deal with this issue. Do you follow me? Yeah. Can you see why? If, if, you, if you've had three boys and you realise you've got three boys, you'd really like a girl, uh, if you really were motivated by love and truth, you wouldn't want to impose that emotion on the next person that comes along, the next child you get pregnant with, right? Because you have done that for the whole of its gestation period, for nine months. Not just at yeah. the moment of its birth, but for nine months you're going, I want it to be a girl, I want it to be a girl, I want it to be a girl, right? Well, even after we had Zia, our daughter, she was even reflecting, I want a sister, I want a sister, and I knew that it was coming from me. Yes. Yep. That, so, yeah. so if you knew that and you were driven by love, you would have chosen to work through the emotion then, not when you got pregnant mm. or afterwards or after the time you gave birth. If you were driven by love, you would only been driven by the desire to feel like, well, that's not a very nice thing to impose on mm. my child, so I need to address this right now. So, mm. so if you're driven by love, you would have dealt with it before you got pregnant. I think that's what shocked me because I thought that I had felt, okay, I'm going to be disappointed, it's a boy, I'm going to work through that. But then it was right in my face, the moment it was there. Because like, you want to lie to yourself, right? You yeah. want to tell yourself that you have dealt with something when yeah. you haven't. And hence the fever and so forth, mm. the anger which was coming out of you regarding the choice, mm. but regarding the outcome. Can you see that if you're driven by love, you would have dealt with it much sooner? Yeah. Driven by pain, you only deal with it when the pain is at a certain intensity. That's the problem with pain, yeah. is that if you're only driven by it, you will only deal with it when the pain is at that level of intensity. That's yeah. the only time you will do it. Uh, this is why we need to have this discussion because, you know, on a lot of levels I see many of you not understanding the causes of pain, right, which is sin, and the causes of pleasure, not sinning. But not only that, you are only driven by the prevention of pain when you resolve issues. That's all you're driven by, which is also a problem because we need to be driven by more pure motives. If we're ever going to have a relationship with God, we need to have more pure motives of addressing a problem. And pain is not a pure motive. It's just, it's just a feedback mechanism, the law of compensation at work on our soul. That's all the pain is about. So what we're, and as you'll find later on in our discussions, when you're responding only to pain, you're only responding to the law of compensation. You're not entering repentance. You're only working through the law of compensation issues. Right? A person who truly loves doesn't want to work through the law of compensation issues anymore. They work through repentance issues, which is a very, very different process than just being driven by pain. But the law of compensation is the pain. Yeah, so, so the law that you're working with most of the time, so you, most of you are not on the divine love path yet what you call the divine love path, the way. You're not on it yet because the majority of times you're working through compensatory effects of what you've chosen to do. And that's because pain is your only motivator. When pain is your only motivator, that's the only time you'll address a problem. So that's the law of compensation at work. Does that make sense? The law of repentance works on love. So when we truly love, we will want to address and want to become repentant. It works on a different set of laws. Right? This is why we need to understand God's laws too. Right? We need to have session number three about understanding God's laws because we need to understand the relationship between pain and the law of compensation right? and the pleasurable outcomes of the law of repentance. Right? The law of compensation drives, drives the pain and the pain drives you to change. And what I'm suggesting to you is actually you'd be better off having the desire, love drive repentance and therefore repentance drive change. 
that would be better off and you'll learn how to do that later, right? But most of you are not doing that. You're just dri driven by the law of compensation. And I'm still driven by the law of compensation sometimes because I, there's certain things I don't want to work my way through to repent about. Obviously, some of the things for me, I feel too big, too big to address sometimes. And so, so I get the same thing as you, pain, <laughs> as a result. The law is the same for everybody. Right? So it doesn't matter who you are. The law is the same. Does that make sense? If you come to Diane. <coughs> um, my question is about pain, but it's um, a little bit um, connected to what you were saying to Claudia. Mm -hmm. Claudia. Um, I thought I was connecting to God. Mm -hmm. I have thought. Mm -hmm. And and when I do, I cry and I f and I actually feel pain in my chest. Mm -hmm. But now, after hearing what you said to her and what you said to Paul before, I'm wondering whether you know any of that's true. But um, when we feel God's love entering us, can is it sometimes painful or? Well, it's not God's love that's painful. It's the it's contrast between the love and what's inside of us already that is painful. And so, so is there something leaving me when I feel that pain or, or not? Is it have you changed, Diane? Yeah, I feel like I have. Feel like you have? Yeah. And I don't know if I'm kidding myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's assume, and I'd suggest this to the majority of you, we are, did I say weasels or eels? <laughs> which, both, which is... A, poor reflection on both of those uh, lovely animals but uh, we we are pretty weasley and slippery and and the reality is we want to convince ourselves of things when they're not true right? and we need to take particular care of that mm. of that issue does that make sense mm. yep so so my suggestion to you is over a period of time, measure the changes in your life. Have you become more loving? Or are you just more loving to your own definition? Are you able to ask God and receive an answer from God about the level of love that you have? Well, that, that's where I'm confused because I, I feel like I was asking God and I was getting these feelings. It, like it was a feeling, but it was quite a painful feeling so I'm a bit confused whether I'm actually hearing from God or feeling from God or not remember I said that sometimes there will also be painful feelings from God because because the reality is God's trying to show us that something's out of harmony with love and this is what it feels like yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've tried to like have I had like a little barometer thing going between me and God and just having <coughs> having a um, thought that and I'm you know, asking God if this is the truth and I would, if this is God's truth and I would get that feeling and then I would ask another question, is this God's truth, knowing it's not? And then I get no feeling. So I was trying to ascertain like a way So of is it all just coming from your own head or is it? <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's most likely, isn't it? Yeah. Like God's going to surprise you most of the time. It's not going to be that predi as predictable as what you're trying to okay. make it. Yeah. Okay. I haven't observed a large change in your life, Diane. Mm. Haven't observed a large change in the way in who you associate with, who you <laughs> spend time with, what you finish up doing with your life. Haven't observed large changes in any of those aspects of your life. So, what does that say? Mm, I haven't changed. Not much. Uh. Mm. You know, once you start receiving God's love, like all of those things change quite rapidly. Mm. So, so if they haven't changed quite rapidly, then my question would be: Well, you say you're getting all these feelings from God, but there's not some rapid change in your life occurring. So, how does that work? Mm. Is it, could it be just that you're fooling yourself about the issue? Given the fact that we are Weasley and slippery characters, yeah. that's possible, right? Yeah. Yep. So you've got these feedback mechanisms. 
rapid change in your life in a positive direction with regard to love always an indication that you are embracing more loving life and you are embracing the principles what about your attitude to truth if you found that's changed you speak the truth all the time now and you're open with everybody about how how you feel and no no so there's another aspect so that hasn't changed so it's, yeah it's changed a little bit because i had a lot of fear about and what's that. the holy spirit connection based on truth mm. so so if there's not a major change in my life in respect to truth, then can, am I really connecting to God? I don't know. Can't be, huh? Mm. Must be connecting to someone else. Who would that someone else be? The spirit. Who's feeding your addictions. Mm. Similar to what I said to Claudia. Yeah. yeah. Which is why you felt prompted to ask the question. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. Examine, examine things honestly, and if you examine your attitude to truth, your attitude to love, how you're loving with others, what kinds of actions you're taking in your life that are in harmony with love, how's your life changing? Who have you attracted? Have you attracted your soulmate into your life? Have you attracted, um, are you engaging your a life with desire in harmony with love and all of these different things? Most of you would have to say no to those things. And, and yet many of you do believe you're connecting to God. And I'm suggesting, well, hang on a sec. If you were connecting to God, you'd be doing these things. Mm. So uh, I'd suggest to you, no, you're not connecting to God. You're connecting to a spirit who wants you to believe that God okay. and who's willing to feed your addictions, okay. including the addiction to think you're progressing when you're not. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so look at that. Look at why you feel motivated to do that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Good. Okay, so um, hopefully in this conversation we've had now, and you have an opportunity to ask more questions about it in a minute, hopefully in this conversation you can see the cause of pain, the cause of pleasure, from God's perspective, and the cause of happiness and the cause of suffering from God's perspective. And hopefully you can start to see what needs to change. And one of the things that needs to change is our addiction to avoiding pain. Because... We need to learn to experience pain and be sensitive to pain if we're ever going to change. And we also need to get to the state where love drives our decision-making processes rather than pain. Now, while you're madly going around trying to prevent pain, it's going to be pain becomes your God. Pain becomes the thing that drives all of your behaviour. The prevention of it, primarily. Or pleasure drives your behavior in other words what you define as pleasure which is often from god's point of view pain is driving your behavior and then you're wondering why you have a painful life so either of those things needs to be examined and this is why we wanted to have this conversation with you about pain and pleasure because we feel many of you still are not using pain and pleasure as measuring yardsticks you also have a very warped view of pain and pleasure a warped view of pain in particular that this concept that you don't that you shouldn't have to feel any is ludicrous because the reality is there's a whole heap of it inside of you. You're going to have to feel some to, to progress. You're going to have to feel some. Stop being addicted to running away from your pain and not having to feel it. This is something that needs to change if you're ever going to progress. So what we'll do is we'll have a break for 10 minutes. So if we can come back at half past uh, three, and then we'll have about a 40-minute Q&A on that subject.